Alright guys, welcome back to Marshall Remodel. This video is going to be on taking down a 64 by 48 post frame building. It's an existing building. If you guys follow along, you know I took a smaller one down. I've got the big one down. It took me a little longer than expected. Um, help that I thought I was going to have, I didn't. Um, but nonetheless, this last few weeks has been really challenging for Emily and I in so many different ways. Um, but we got through it. Um, this building is going to be my shop here at the Mad County build uh, in the future. But it couldn't have been worse timing uh, to get this building with everything we have going on here with uh, trying to finish up this house. But, you know, right before a victory or right after, or sometimes the you will face some of your greatest challenges and uh, that was uh, definitely the case for us but we've made it through it let's go ahead and jump into this video and check it out All right guys, welcome back to the show. Today, my brother-in-law and I are gonna start taking the inside of this bigger of two buildings down. And we're gonna start with these garage doors, get those down so we can get some air moving in here. And then we're gonna start taking all the steel off the walls. All the steel in here is, it's all been painted. Um, it's probably not too salvageable, so I think I'm just gonna junk it all. But we got lights to take down, lots of stuff. So hopefully we can basically get the doors, all the lights and all that kind of stuff stripped down by the end of the day.
All right, well, as you can see, we have all the metal stripped off the ceilings, the side walls. I got all the two by four ceiling joists down, all the internal two by four girts down. This morning, I got all the gas line, air line, and wiring ripped out. So the last thing I have to do to get this down to the shell is to get all this bat insulation out, which it's stapled, so it's gonna come down pretty easy. Some of it just kind of fell down. It's real thin. So I'm gonna get after that now, wrap that up today, see where I'm at when I get that done. So to get this insulation down, I used a garden rake and it worked pretty good. I just uh, reached up, grabbed the edge of the bad insulation and pulled down with the garden rake and it pulled it right down. The whole building probably only took me 20, 25 minutes to get all of this insulation down to the ground. All right guys, part of any demo project, you have to have a dumpster to get rid of this stuff. And I've been using BigRents.com, so I just wanted to mention that. This is my second dumpster for this project. And the one thing that's nice about using Big Rents is I call Big Rents and then they take care of calling the local company and getting them to exchange the dumpster or and or pick it up. So it makes it really easy. That way I'm not trying to call, wait for a call and try to get that arranged. So this is my second dumpster on this project and I just about got it full. So I'll be calling um, to get it taken away. So if you guys uh, are interested in renting from big rents i've rented uh excavators from them i've rented um uh, a lift from them i've rented dumpsters from them and all of my experiences with them have been really smooth so if you're interested interested there's a special phone number and website for marshall remodel give them uh check them out if you're interested in renting something and uh see if it works for you all right guys, I got everything stripped down on the inside. So we're gonna be taking off these panels on the outside and I'm trying to save the outside one so I can use it for the interior skin when I put this building back up. I'll just paint it whatever color I want. It's in really good shape. It's just faded. I'll probably paint it like bright white or something. But it's got ring shank nails in it. So what do you gotta do? So you gotta use a pry bar and hammer. So you get it in there start it and then you got to put something behind to pry against so you don't dent it. And you can see there's no dents there so that's what I'm going to be doing probably for the next two days so they actually come out not too bad so we're going to get after it get this side stripped off since it's in the shade and then in the afternoon I'll go to the other side and just kind of try to hide in the shade. It's supposed to be about 90 degrees today. My, my helper said he needed a day off. He was just too tired. So um, probably running solo today. All right guys, that's the end of uh, four, end of day four. I had a little bit of time in this and I've done pretty well. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get this side ripped off. I'll get all the trim around all these doors, get all the windows out, and then hopefully start working on uh, the roof. The roof won't be, the only thing that bad is gonna be bad about the roof is the sun, so just gotta keep plugging away. A lot of the time 
when you're taking nails out is picking them up. So on the roof, what I did is I left the gutters on, just popped all the nails out, swept them into the gutter, and then collected them later before taking the gutter down. Tell you what, this building is kicking my butt. I don't think I'll ever do this again. All right guys, what I've been doing is I've been grinding the heads off the 60 penny pearl nails because they are hardened. You can't cut them, you can break them, but it's working pretty well. Like you saw in that last one, all the purlins came. I left them hooked to that one and then we just popped them off. But this next truss will be bare because it's, uh, it's that middle truss that'll bring all the purlins off. So got all the purlins loose. I just got to knock the ends and the bracing and we should be able to get this one down pretty quick. Overall, taking the trusses down went really well. The only problem we had is on this fourth truss, two of the gussets broke while taking it down and it collapsed. Even though that's unfortunate, I will be able to replace the two by 10 um, at the bottom where it broke and put it back together.
She said she wanted to help a little bit, so I'm letting her. All right, guys, one thing I wanted to talk about with this building is these posts were in the ground, and I'm going to show you why I don't like putting posts in the ground. This And these posts are guaranteed for life. And if you look, they're rotten. And I pushed every single one of these posts over with my skid steer with very little effort. So that's why I don't like putting the posts in the ground. Even though these posts are guaranteed for, for life, they still rot. Um, there's just too many different kinds of soil conditions and stuff like that that can uh, make them rot. But anyway, we're just gonna finish this up. And then I gotta come back tomorrow, get rid of the metal, the scrap metal, and some of the garbage and I'll be done. All right guys, thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned this week. We're gonna have um, our concrete floors in the house, the finishing of those. That video will probably be out in the next couple days. Um, we'll take you through, we used epoxy and then a polyurethane over it to kinda kill the shine, but we'll take you through that whole process. I know there's always lots of questions on um, how you should finish off your concrete floors. We'll share with you how we did it and how it turned out. But we really appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit it. And we will catch you on the next video.